Today we're talking about my favorites of 2020 because even though it was a shit year, there were still some pretty good things about it and let's highlight those. So today will be about obviously books, I mean, you know me. So books, TV shows, movies, podcast episodes, and my favorite YouTube creators because YouTube is an amazing platform. So those amazing content creators also deserve some love. But before we jump in, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Kirsten and I mainly talk about books as I already told you and also skincare and adulting because I'm trying to adult, but it's hard. I also just received this new blue blouse by mail, which I ordered via Instagram through a vintage Instagram account, which is one of the best inventions ever. It's so nice. So if you've seen my previous videos, you might know that I have a book club during which I discuss books and those are mainly books that I have read the month prior to that book club and yeah that is why i just read a lot in 2020 i actually managed to read 42 books in 2019 and 2018 i only managed to read like eight so to now suddenly read 42 again it's definitely thanks to lockdown a bit but i have set myself a new goal which is 40 books that is how i have come to read 42 books and these two are a part of my favorite 2020 books not that have been released in 2020 not necessarily but that i've read in 2020 so i have five favorite books of which circe is definitely one this is about the greek goddess circe and will actually be online next week in my new book club episode it's about the greek goddess circe and her life and it's very very cool it's fiction obviously it's not a super light read but it's still so good then Educated by Tara Westover is based on, it's, it's basically a memoir. So it starts with her telling about her life, where she grew up, uh, very strange circumstances, and how eventually she became educated and she learned how to critically think and, well, not just follow her parents anymore. And it's heartbreaking and beautiful. And the other three books that were my favorites were Looking at My Laptop, Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Allerton, which I have discussed in a book club, which will appear now on the screen somewhere. I loved it. It's... It made me laugh so much and then in the end a bit of crying. Then secondly, This Is Your Brain on Birth Control, on which I have actually dedicated an entire video. Um, not just a book club video, but an entire video because what I read in that book was mind-blowing. It's about birth control and all the effects that are still unknown, the effects that are known and are pretty messed up. And yeah, what the options are, it's horrible. Um, it made me very mad and also very informed. So please read it if you might think that's interesting. And then my fifth favorite book of 2020 was How to Own the World, which is actually about investing. So you see that I have read a range of genres but how to own the world was definitely my favorite investing book it was very clear it was funny which is quite rare uh, but yeah it was very clear it explained every kind of element that you can invest in uh, what you should know it was a bit focused on the london market but to be honest you could just apply it to any other city country whatever and i learned a lot the way that he explained everything was just really good and if you want to get started with investing, which I think you should, everyone should invest, even if it's just 50 bucks. So that is regarding books. I kind of like it here. Maybe I should start a second bookshelf next to my plant. Then category number two, movies. The majority of the movies that I'll be telling you about in one minute are ones that I've seen in cinema pre-lockdown. But one is actually from Netflix. And let's just first dive into that one because that's one that you can most definitely see as Probably everyone has a Netflix account. And that is The Midnight Sky with George Clooney. You might have seen it on your feed. And at first I was like, I'm not really into those galaxy spacey kind of movies, but it was much more than that. It was about family and love. Obviously also the surrounding story about like planet Earth dying and him being the only probably only survivor on earth. It was so beautiful. There's a very unexpected element in it and it was so beautiful. It had me crying at the end and I, yeah, you should most definitely watch that one. But then other movies that I've seen in the cinema are Adam, which was about a Moroccan girl in Morocco who is pregnant and is looking for shelter. And then for one night, she's invited to stay at a woman's house. That woman kind of well, obviously, it's, she doesn't have a husband. She's just pregnant, so a woman wants her to leave right away because otherwise it would damage her reputation. But they actually bond a friendship very soon, and it's very painful and beautiful to watch. 1917. Wow. 
the cinematography in that movie is just gorgeous. So 1917 is about the First World War and you gotta watch it. I'm, I don't want to spoil anything else, but wow. I keep saying wow a lot in this video. I am sorry, but then this is also a favorites video, so it kind of is expected for me to be wowed by all the things that I'm mentioning, so I'm sorry. And the first movie that I have seen in the cinema is Parasite, which obviously won an Oscar, so that's already a reason probably to watch it. I hope that it's not not a reason to watch it, but it was unexpected. It was so funny. The story was original. It was really good. Go watch it with your friends or lover and let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. The next category is TV shows, which are my speciality. I mean, I am someone who Netflix daily. I would not call it a problem, but I have watched a lot of series the past year, which I think goes for all of us. There was a pandemic, there is a pandemic. There were several lockdowns and yeah, we had to do something. So Netflix was there to help us. And what were my favorite TV shows and that I think that you should watch if you haven't yet? Well, The Haunting of Hill House, horror, but so good. Down to Earth with Zac Efron because he actually went to countries and explained things that will hopefully help against climate change that I did not know of yet. And examples of countries that he went to are Iceland, France. It was just so cool. I don't really know why he's not a vegan himself because obviously he cares about climate change and the world, but then he does eat meat. I don't know how much, obviously. That was just one thought that I had during the TV show. Then thirdly, Working Moms, which is just Hilarious. I was kind of late starting it, but please, if you haven't watched it yet, it's so good. It's so funny. And if I recall correctly, the episodes are not that long. So for me, that's perfect. Then another hilarious TV show. I was very late with that one for sure. And I'm, I don't know why there's not a second season is Dairy Girls. Dairy Girls follows a group of North Irish students at high school, all girls, because obviously they go to a all girls school. This is set in like 1980. Please don't shoot me if I'm wrong. 1980, I think. That show had me laughing all the time. The music is amazing. Please watch it. It's so good. Then the fifth show that I watched on Netflix is Selfmade, which is about a woman who starts her own hair product company. I'm, I forgot exactly what the product was, but she invents this hair product and... But obviously she's a woman. She's also black and it's 19... I don't know. So it is hard for her to find investors, but she is an inspiration. She is such a businesswoman and wow. You should really watch that one for the story, but also for the amazing music that's in there. I am obsessed with Little Sims. And also again, let me know what you thought of it. The sixth one is Afterlife, which is sad, but mainly super, super, super funny. It's with Ricky Gervais playing a widower and how he kind of is just done with his life and wants to commit suicide. But obviously there are still some ties that he just can't cut off. And one of them is his dog, which he once got for his late wife. And the way his humor works is brilliant. And the episodes are also short. So that was definitely one of my favorites of 2020. Then there are three more left, so stay with me. I'm not gonna explain the crown. I think that one is self-explanatory. Queen's Gambit. Same story, self-explanatory, it was amazing and you've probably all watched it. And then the last TV show of 2020 that was one of my favorites is Dark. Dark is German. It is about this mysterious town and its citizens are disappearing and there's something involved with radiation and I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil anything more. And also please don't spoil anything for me because I haven't finished season three yet. I think I'm still in three. I'm, definitely done with two definitely then off to podcasts i in the intro said podcast episodes but i actually meant just podcasts so i'm sorry the first one that i'm going to mention is the only dutch one in this list so if you have no idea what i'm saying just absorb the dutch words and let it pass so my first favorite podcast is one that i discovered last and it is called jong beleggen and is all about investing from basics and just super informative and fun. Then secondly, the high-low, which unfortunately has come to an end after four years and I had only discovered it last summer and man, it was so good. It was so funny, so up-to-date, so interesting. And I, I miss you guys. It was amazing, but I understand it, but still. Then thirdly, another British podcast, which is Table Manners by Jessie Ware and her mom talking about food with 
a different guest every single week and it's just super fun to hear them talk about food, about their favorite dishes, and they have amazing humor and are just adorable together. I mean, the daughter and the mom, so. Besides Jessie Ware being an amazing singer. The fourth podcast is Deliciously Ella, which I, yeah, I am obsessed with everything Deliciously Ella. I have her cookbooks, I have the app, I am obsessed with their YouTube videos with recipes and the Dish the Ella podcast talks not about recipes but about climate change, about the importance of food, wellness, mental health. They invite different guests for different episodes and it's just so informative and I love it. Then the next is So Money with For News to Robbie, which is again also a money gotta love investing. Then the next one is Skinny Confidential, which at first sounds very superficial but it is not. I'm not gonna compare it with Deliciously Ella, but they do both also talk about mental well-being and the Skinny Confidential, like Deliciously Ella, is a couple. So, but obviously there's a big difference between Deliciously Ella and Skinny Confidential and it's up to you to figure that out. And then the last two that I quickly want to mention are How to Feel with Elizabeth Day, of which the book will be discussed in next week's book club episode, and Mothers of Invention, which is all about sustainability. And then from podcasts, we're off to the very last category of this favorites video, which is my favorite YouTube content creators. Let's start with the only guy in this list and man, how much he has taught me about skincare. I think you already know who I'm talking about. It is Hiram. Hiram is the funniest guy talking about skincare ever. He is so sweet. He is so, and his knowledge about skincare is just amazing. So he's definitely one of my favorite content creators on YouTube. Then secondly, Sarah's Day, because I have been following her for years and years and years. And I have to be honest that I'm nowadays more enjoying her Instagram because it's more up to date, but also still her YouTube channel is one that I adore. And then the rest of the following content creators that I quickly want to highlight are ones that I've only actually discovered in 2020 and are so worthy of your attention as well. So here they come. Rowena Tsai, who talks about mental well-being, books, is also the co- host of Beauty Within, another skincare channel, and she's just super cute. Then secondly, Nina Florence, who is a British girl talking about college, about ethical brands, about just everything that I also adore. So that is that. Then thirdly, Where I Live, a American girl based in New York talking about, again, sustainability, vegan recipes, living her life, adulting, and yeah, it's just so calming to watch. The next content creator that I love and is so funny, is Kelly Stamps. You may have noticed her. Her channel just blew up in 2020 and well, she works hard for it. She is incredibly funny. She has great content. Do check her out. And then the last creator in this list is Moya Mowini. I'm not entirely sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But she is a Irish girl based in Dublin where she is following her studies and I am obsessed with her editing skills. Whatever she produces, it is art, which I also really think is the case for any YouTuber, but especially Moya and Where I Live, both just oh, beautiful works of art. And so yeah, Moya vlogs about well, her life, currently doing a vegan challenge in January and again, ethical brands, lots of honest talking about her mental well-being while well being in college and in lockdown. So, so you see that there's kind of a pattern of creators that I really like and that was the video. So I hope that you have enjoyed this, that you have written it all down. If not, everything is in the description box below, so don't worry. And don't forget to hit subscribe if you would like to see all of my videos every single week. And then I'll see you next week for a new video. Thank you so much for watching.